And you had Mayor de Blasio on last night, and just he said he lied to America. He said that he's been on top of this from the beginning. On March 2nd, he said, because I'm encouraging New Yorkers to go on with their lives and get out on the town despite coronavirus, and then he told everybody what, what show mm -hmm. to go see. That was on March 2nd. On March 16th, he went to a gym. On March 5th, he's taken the subway, telling people it's totally irresponsible, and it is the epicenter now. And I think it shows you the contrast in leadership when you have feckless leaders or you have a president who's publicly facing every single day, giving people information engagement they need. But Kellyanne, That's why I, the I mean, I understand what you're saying, and I question on the his, coronavirus. Let me ask you something. Okay. It, well, in terms, I, I think that's absolutely true. And I think that last night he demonstrated that he's not giving people a very positive message in terms of, you know, how he's going to guide the, the city through all of this. And I think that that was, you know, that stood out, I think, to a lot of people last night in our discussion. But in terms of the things that you're mentioning, you could probably match up some of those early March statements from him with also similarly optimistic statements from, from President Trump, although they've handled it very differently since There's then. There's no comparison no? between the two leaders. There's no comparison. And this in terms of get out and live 16, your life and go ahead and do do what you're doing back well, in the early I will tell March you, in this White House in this White House my very chief of staff started doing meetings on this on January 12th there have been groups meeting on this all along and in fact uh, today is the one month anniversary of I think the task force being announced or Dr. Burks as the uh, coronavirus responder she's a long-term expert uh, ran PEPFAR over at state long-term infectious disease and AIDS expert HIV expert so we've been on top of this and I will not compare uh, Mayor de Blasio uh, to, to President Trump and neither do the Americans even after all this time there's still a part of me that refuses to believe a person could lack this much self-awareness here's Kellyanne Conway Way, actually attacking Bill de Blasio for saying, quote, that he's been on top of this since the beginning. Yeah, Kellyanne is the senior counselor for Donald Trump. So let's just dive right in and take a look at how Trump has been on top of this since the beginning. Have you been briefed by the CDC? I have. Are the words about a pandemic at this point? No, we're not at all, and uh, we're, we have it totally under control. How concerned are you? Well, we pretty much shut it down. You know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat, as the heat comes in. Uh, typically, that will go away in April. We're in great shape, though. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Uh, they're gonna have vaccines, I think, relatively soon. And they're gonna have something that makes you better, and that's gonna actually take place, we think, even sooner. So it's uh, a lot of good things are happening. Because a lot of people will have this, and it's very mild. Uh, they'll get better very rapidly. They don't even see a doctor. They don't even call a doctor. You know, we have thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that get better just by, you know, sitting around and even going to work. Some of them go to work. But as of right now and yesterday, anybody that needs a test, that's the important thing. And the tests are all perfect. Like the letter was perfect. The transcription was perfect, right? This was... Not as perfect as that, but pretty good. Mr. President, what do you say to Americans who are concerned that you're not taking this seriously enough and that some of your statements don't match what your health experts are saying? That's CNN, fake news. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Be calm. It's really working out, and a lot of good things are going to happen. My first question is, you said that you don't take responsibility, but you did disband the White House pandemic office and the officials that were working in that office left this administration abruptly. So what responsibility do you take to that? And the officials that worked in that office said that you that the White House lost valuable time because that office wasn't disbanded. What do you make of that? Well, I just think it's a nasty question, but it's something that we have uh, tremendous control of. Mr. President, the other day you said that you were not responsible for the testing shortfall. Very simple question. Does the buck stop with you? And on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your response to this crisis? I'd rate it a 10. What do you say the Americans were scared, though? I guess nearly 200 dead, 14,000 who were sick, millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Easter's a very special day for me. And I see it's sort of in that timeline that I'm thinking about. And I say, wouldn't it be great to have all of the churches full? You know, the churches aren't allowed, essentially, to have much of a congregation there. And most of them, I watched on Sunday, online. And he was terrific, by the way. But online is never going to be like being there. So I think Easter Sunday, and you'll have 
packed churches all over our country because we've done one hell of a job. Nobody's done the job that we've done. And it's lucky that you have this group here right now for this problem or you wouldn't even have a country left. So when Kellyanne suggests that Trump has somehow on some planet been on top of this, it is a new level of revisionist history, even for Kellyanne Conway. I mean, we are talking about a guy who wouldn't let a cruise ship with sick Americans aboard dock here because he was so hellbent on downplaying this whole situation and didn't want his numbers to go up and then admitted it. I would rather because I like the numbers being where they are. I don't need to have the numbers double because of one ship that wasn't our fault. Honestly, if Trump were to downplay this thing any further, he'd pretend it doesn't even exist. In fact, he was so committed to downplaying it that we missed every single pivotal opportunity we had to contain the spread. The Trump administration denied diagnostic tests from the WHO back in February, the same test that over 60 nations accepted, and all 60 of those countries have flatter curves than the United States does. In fact, every single country on the face of the earth has flatter curves than the United States, and I don't want to jump to any conclusions here, but it might have something to do with the fact that the guy in charge has been spending the vast majority of his time either pretending it doesn't exist, pretending it's already solved, or attacking those who dare to press him on the fact that it's actually getting worse. Even now, with massive countrywide shortages of masks and gloves and ventilators and protective equipment, Trump still won't invoke the Defense Production Act, claiming that there's no need to because private sector businesses have stepped up. But A, it's not the private sector's job to fill in for an absent government, and B, private sector companies might be working to produce those things now, but we needed it weeks ago. We have doctors reusing old masks and nurses literally showing up to their shifts in garbage bags. But again, I guess preparation isn't really something we should expect from a guy whose priority is denying that there's even anything to prepare for. But the craziest part is that Kellyanne claims that the administration has been meeting on this since January 12th, which makes the fact that Trump has been publicly downplaying it all the more absurd. Admitting that Trump has known for more than two months isn't in his favor when the guy's public appearances have all been him saying that we'll be down to zero cases within the week, only to watch our cases basically double every single day. So either Trump wasn't paying attention in those briefings, or he just ignored it because he wants to play politics instead. So Kellyanne can go on TV and try and gaslight the American people because that's what our tax dollars pay her to do, but she's not fooling anyone. And the fact that even a Fox News host called her out is a testament to the fact that her desperate attempts to rewrite history suddenly don't seem to be working anymore.